theme for this year's Peer Review Week is identity. As we all know, peer review serves authors by improving the quality, the impact and the transparency of their work. But it also has some very clear benefits to the reviewers and the editors themselves, and the nature of these benefits depends on their identity. In addition, the identity of the author, the reviewer and the editor can subtly change the peer review process. At Communications Biology, we reached out to some of our excellent reviewers and editorial board members to hear their thoughts about this. Here's what they have to say. Participating in the peer review process helps me think critically about experiments and consider how my work might be critiqued. This helps me better design experiments at the front end to address potential questions and provide clarification. Reviewing other people's manuscripts has greatly changed the way I conduct my own scientific research. For a starter, it gives me a lot of inspiration reading new articles, but also it feels like I'm at the pulse of science as it happens, because it's often hard to take time out of a busy schedule and try to keep on top of the literature by browsing all the papers. Well, I've been a researcher for over 20 years and have benefited from the services that other scientists have given to the research community through their reviewing activities. Um, I think of reviewing manuscripts as a way of giving back, uh, returning the favour. The double-blind review process, in which authors and reviewers are anonymous to each other, allows a certain level of confidentiality whereby potential bias could be mitigated. It aims for academic objectivity without our innate implicit bias, such as author's prior publication history, gender, academic status, or country of origin, potentially influencing the review process. Uh, I think double-blind peer reviewing is leveling the field by decreasing the rather inherent bias of reviewers towards well-established groups. The main problem with double-blind peer review is that it is really difficult to implement because at least in certain fields of science uh, in which there are not so many researchers or there are a few active topics of research, Everybody tends to know everybody, so it's at some point really easy for a research in one of these fields to know who the authors are. Do I treat manuscripts different from in-house editors? Probably yes. It's difficult not to be influenced by your own submission experience. I don't think there are many differences between how myself and in-house editors have the manuscripts, except for perhaps those manuscripts uh, related to fields where I'm technically proficient because I'm actively doing research. helped me more than I expected to begin with, especially because I understood what are the criteria and what are the requirements for a manuscript to progress to being seen by reviewers. As someone who is relatively new to being a, an editor, I'm very much enjoying finding out about the other side of the publication story and I'm enjoying um, the mental stimulation most from doing the work. Thank you to everyone who contributed their opinions on how the identity of different players in peer review can subtly affect the process, but always be beneficial to all of those involved. As ever, Communications Biology would like to thank its authors, reviewers and external editors for continuing to ensure that the quality of science remains high. The in-house team at Communications Biology will continue to strive to ensure the peer review process remains as efficient and consistent as possible. We look forward to reading your papers in future. Thank you.